If you're looking for tuned pitches on the machine drum, one of the best places to look is in the EFM family of machines. Essentially, these are different collections of simple frequency modulation algorithms that are tuned for particular types of sounds. Basically, if you turn off all of the inbuilt modulation, you're going to end up with pure oscillators. Turning up the decay will result in a lot of clicks as the previous note is cut off. The EFM machines differ quite a bit in their pitch range available. The cowbell has a fairly wide and usable range. Now to bring back the modulator. A very small amount of modulation goes quite a long way, with big jumps in the modulation frequency parameter. Turning the modulation decay envelope to maximum is a good way to get a more static modulation. The feedback control seems to feed the main oscillator back into itself, rather than feeding the modulator back into itself. I'll put a feedback P-lock in here. And I'll try P-locking the modulation frequency a bit. And I'll increase the depth of the modulation for this step. And I want another trigger or two. I want to cut out some of the highs, so time to engage the filter. And I'll use the EQ to emphasize some frequencies that I like. This sound is very harmonically rich already, but I'm curious what some distortion will do. That's kind of an ugly clipping sound. I'll leave it turned up just a smidge though. Turn up the decay a bit. I'm not really feeling the default modulation frequency. Maybe try out the modulation envelope a bit too. Since I'm filtering some of the high frequencies, adjusting the feedback parameter won't be quite as dramatic now. Let's try raising that filter cutoff. The EQ could use a little adjustment now. I don't want the sound quite so rich, so I'm going to turn the feedback down. That's good enough for my first cowbell. Time to copy this track. Okay, let's find a complementary pitch. Yeah, that probably works for now. I'm going to change up that modulation frequency also. The snap parameter seems like it's relatively simplistic, but it always gives me a somewhat unexpected result. Time to change up how this one's being filtered. Okay, that's different enough for now. Let's copy this one. And time for a new pitch. Going to shorten the modulation decay. Maybe this higher cowbell can be a bit more percussive. And now I'm thinking I want to engage the amplitude modulator. The addition of high-frequency ring modulation offers extra options for introducing harmonics to a sound. Tuning it properly can be a bit touch and go, but it's a very powerful feature. Now time to add some modulation to this sound. 
I'm just going to go straight for the decay. Need to adjust the default decay value now. And I'll put some decay modulation on track 2 as well. I'm going to set it to a fairly slow speed and I'm going to set the LFO update mode to hold. And I don't need the modulation depth to be that high. Now I want to adjust some of these filters. I feel like I need to adjust that high frequency ring mod. Since I have some ring modulation happening, I'm going to turn down the feedback. And let's mess with this modulator. Now to do something with the first cowbell's LFO. Might be fun to modulate the modulator. Okay, that adds a little bit of movement. Now it's time to go to track four and do something a little different. The first thing I'm going to do is to plug the C output into the A input. Now that I have a bit of self-patch going on, I'm going to put an input machine on track 4. I'm going to use my favorite input machine, the envelope input machine. So envelope input A. I'll put one trig down in order to trigger the machine. Now I'm going to go into the global menu and route the output of my first three tracks to output C. Now we're just getting a little blip at the beginning of the pattern from that first trig that I placed. So now to turn up the hold time. Hearing some nasty clipping there. This doesn't seem to be clearing it up, so it must be happening at the physical input stage. I'm going to turn down the level of my first three tracks. I'm having to turn these down quite a bit. I'm going to boost the master volume. There, that's sounding much cleaner. Crank up the input machine a bit. The input machines offer their own slightly different flavor of distortion. Okay, so now that I have a better handle on the gain staging, let's start making a pattern out of this. Not really consciously trying to line these triggers up with the original rhythm in any way. The input machines also have their own slightly different flavor of filter, so let's engage that and see how it sounds. The input machine filter has its own envelope, which is very useful. Time to chew on some of this harmonically rich material with the EQ and filter. With the input machine filter, this is actually three filters in series. Four filters if you count the EQ. Maybe a bit more distortion from the input machine. Need to open up that filter a bit. OK, 
Okay, that's pretty good for now. Let's copy this input machine. And time to change up the trick pattern. Tweak the input machine a bit, just get it somewhat different than the other one. Now for the filters and EQ. Interesting interaction of the filters here. Very clicky resonance. The clicking is coming from the input machine's filter resonance, so I'm going to go back there for a moment. feel like removing one of these trigs at the end here. That's a bit better. That clickiness was a little too much for me in this context. Now that the sharp edges are softened a bit, maybe I'll try emphasizing that upper region. Maybe this time I'll try adjusting that resonance click by messing with the envelope. Need to adjust the EQ slightly. A little bit of that click is nice, but not too much. Time to send some of these sounds into the reverb and delay. It's important to note that the three initial cowbell sounds can't get sent through the reverb and delay directly anymore since they're being sent out of an individual output. I want a lot of reverb, so I'm going to crank up the level. I'm going to move this a bit away from the default settings, filter the highs, raise the decay, turn up the damping. It's pretty rare for me not to use any pre-delay on the reverb. With this sort of very rhythmic pattern, I'm going to pick a fairly straightforward timing. And I'll engage the gate a bit to cut off some of the reverb tails. Now on to the delay. Turn up the level a bit, and I'm going to change the timing to a 2 against 3. And as usual, I'll filter those delay repeats. And we need some feedback as well. Okay, now to the EQ. Going to zero out its master gain. I don't want to be clipping on the way out of the EQ. Now time to add a bunch of that gain back in. I often use the parametric band with the Q turned all the way down. Now to engage the compressor. Almost every single parameter needs adjusted in order to get a basic compression scenario happening. I'll let through a smidge of the dry signal. I'm going to take out some of that gain added by the compressor in the EQ stage. Might as well try some heavy handed filtering on the reverb. Need to increase my reverb sense now. thinking I should P-lock the reverb send and delay send. Okay, that's a bit more dynamic. Now it's time to copy this track. Since the other two input machines are focused more on the mid-range, I think I'm going to have this one emphasize a higher frequency area. Let's try cranking that input level for some distortion. And now it's time to adjust these filters and EQ. Now time to 
adjust the effects sense, and I'm going to remove those effects send P locks. And maybe add one back. I really like moving this high pass cutoff frequency around. Let's put some modulation on it. And definitely need to turn down this track a bit. Not quite sure where to go next. How about we take a listen to what happens when we mute some of these source tracks. It's very cool how just that one sound can get a lot of movement from all the processing. Now to add the middle cowbell. the high cowbell by itself. Now to isolate the input machines a bit. the EFM bass drum a good bit lately, so I'm feeling something a little different. Maybe the PI bass drum. Hey, that's sounding pretty good right off the bat. Nice and meaty. Probably has a lot to do with my master EQ and compressor settings. I really like the physically modeled kit on the machine drum, but they aren't always the most versatile. I've fiddled around with those parameters enough. Time for some filter and EQ. Now that we have a kick, let's do a bass sound. I'll do another input machine. Down. I'll see if I can use the filter resonance to create a bass. To dial this one in, I'm going to need to mute some sounds. Okay, the default envelope on the input machine is kind of short. Turn up the input gain a little. Okay, let's tighten up that envelope a bit. Now to mess with the other two filters. Try boosting the bass with the high pass a little. Not quite catching the low frequencies that I'm looking for. Might as well put some accents on it. I think I missed. Yep, I missed. And I wanted to turn down the accent level. Okay, back to that stubborn filter and EQ. There was something. 
Let's start bringing back some of the other sounds and turn off some of these cowbells. Now for the input machines. And all the cowbells. Got to turn down some of these levels. That's a little better. Let's go back to our most recent input machine. I'll give up on this high pass filter for now. Let's hear how it sounds through the effects. Okay, let's try some effects and v locks. Now to see what we can do with the LFO. Let's route it to the input machine's filter frequency. overloading when to turn down the Q. Oh yeah, I should probably use the envelope properly. Definitely need to turn down the input gain here. And now turn up the track level. really a bass, but I'm enjoying the sound. Now I want to clap to go with my kick. Get some tricks down on two and four. Instead of tweaking the sound a bunch right away, I'm going to use one of my favorite tricks for making some of the hits in a pattern silent. I'm going to use a square wave on the volume parameter. And I'll turn the speed down lower, and I'll set the update to hold. Maybe a little faster than that. You may notice I'm picking prime numbers here. And I'll leave the depth at zero. Now I'm going to P-lock the LFO depth on the hits that I want to occasionally be silenced. 